Good morning, everyone. So this is going to be based on Nottinghamshire, but hopefully every county has its own local wildlife site selection criteria. If they haven't, then you are the county recorder. It's about time you got stuck in and actually wrote them. So what I'm going to try and cover is why do we record dragonflies? And these are just some of the reasons I thought of. Because we like to be out in the wild, we like seeing new things, and it could be a project, it could be the National Atlas, it could be an update atlas, it could be a county atlas. But one of the more important things, and I think we often forget to think about this one, because we want to get a site protected. Now what I mean by protected is, at some point, your area might come up for a planning application because they want to build adjacent to it, or on top of it even. And so if you've got your site protected, it might make them think, stop, because they've got to spend a lot of money to either translocate it, which is damn difficult to say the least, or not build up quite so close and incorporate it into a feature within the new build that they make use of. And how are they going to stop all the pollution incidents and everything else that goes on? So I'm going to take you through the process that we did for one particular site. So for Nottinghamshire, uh, and do go back to the BDS and DCG and their confirmation of breeding. So we're looking at science again, as Tim mentioned. Uh, there are two criteria in Nottinghamshire. A site that supports a grade one or grade two species. And the grade one and grade two are the scarcer, rarer species in your county. Now, your list is probably going to be different from our list. Good, so should it be. So we've defined the species. Unfortunately, we've lost a site recently for black data. It's on a heathland and the pond dried out and it's never refilled. So it's becoming scarcer. We occasionally get common hawker come across from Derbyshire as far as I'm aware, there's no proven breeding in knots. Is that right? Um, we, had, we had a female LB positive a couple of years ago. Oh, right. Well, there you go. Yeah. And then we get new ones like the small red-eyed damselfly coming in, but we've also got willow emerald. Uh, scarce chase has just made it into knots as well. So maybe it's time for this list to be reviewed. Criteria two is any site with a total assemblage of 11 breeding species. So you do need to go out and observe, but you also need to collect the exuviae as well. You need that proof of breeding. So there we are. Benley Marsh. The viaduct you can see in the uh, mirror image and just the little stanchions, is a Grade 2 listed building. It uh, used to carry a railway. It's now just been opened up as a walkway to connect two parts of Ilkeston and Orsworth, and you can walk across the top of it. But below, there are three ponds, about 25 metres square each pond, and they were limed deliberately because immediately adjacent to it, they used to have a coal processing plant. And the coal processing plant used to wash the coal and the water became acidic. The water was then pumped into here, so deacidifying the water. So these are called deacidification pits. Before the water then flows out just the other side of the viaduct into the Eriwash River. The Eriwash floods quite a lot, so sometimes these are close to being level with the water of the uh, river itself, especially just this last year. So I used to do a lot of walking around these ponds, and used to do a lot of uh, days out for the BDS. Unfortunately, work changed and habitats changed, life changed, so I don't do as much as I used to. But we have the following species breeding on site. So I've got a whole load of pictures, so just appreciate the pictures as we go through.
I won't say all the pictures are mine, nor are they all, unfortunately, from the site, because some of them get out into the middle of these areas and without some decent lens, and I'll be honest, I haven't got that sort of lens and money, you can't get them. So you can see we get a, quite a good range of damselflies. And then we start getting the uh, dragonflies. And I've actually found a newly emerged southern hawker on site. So I've got photographs with the exuvators below and its wings are out before it takes its maiden flight. Brown hawkers were always about. Migrant hawkers are always there. And that right one... Just above where uh, the three ponds are, they created a new bypass for Orsworth. They created some ponds. They got a nice walkway through. Unfortunately, the ponds became clogged with bulrush. We got in for three years in a row trying to oink it all out, and it just kept coming back and back and back. They needed to dig the ponds a bit deeper, but they weren't prepared. The highways agency weren't prepared to assisters with that so unfortunately those ponds have just about ceased and they've just become muddy damp patches. Emperor Dragonfly I was doing a survey around the ponds late one night for of all things great crested newts when I noticed an Emperor Dragonfly larvae crawling up the reed mace so I sat down torch between my knees shining onto this so I could get the camera to photograph and I've taken a whole series of photographs as this emerged overnight. And at about 1.20 in the morning I thought, oops, I better go home otherwise my wife's going to wonder where the hell I am. <laughs> so when I first started collecting Exuvier, Dave Price is here, he actually came across and helped me identify some of the earlier Exuvier I collected. It's then I started, hang on, I'll go and buy this book and that book and all the rest of it and start to learn how to do it myself. This is one of the scarcer ones, and I think I've only managed to collect one exuvier for black-tailed skimmer, but we could often see them on the bare ground around the ponds. Ruddy darters, along with common darters, and there we go, there's just a complete list. So we've got more than 11 species actually breeding. Now some of them, like the smaller damselflies, are a bit difficult to find the exuviae. So as long as you can record good numbers of those, year after year after year, you've got a reasonably good chance that they are breeding on site. So, armed with all this information, we then went to the Knott Biological and Geological Geological Record Centre. This is the date, these are the species we recorded them, these are the exuviae we found and presented all the information. They then take that to their board and it was designated a local wildlife site. It used to be called a sink, a site of importance for nature conservation, but most counties are moving towards the LWS these days, so they're all consistent. So if you have the time and skills also, these sites often have a lot of other species that help to make it a more rounder, broader picture. And on this particular site, we had reptiles, amphibians, mammals, and other invertebrates. So we had frogs. We had water voles. And of course, they're scarce and very hard to find these days. I'm not saying they're still there, but they were when that photograph was taken grass snakes, and I've got a metre long grass snake skin that was shed and left. So I've still got that. And great crested newts. And just as a bit of a precaution, just down the road by about six, seven hundred metres from where the three ponds are, they were putting in a new piece of road, connect the Allsworth Bypass to a, a big shopping centre. And I happened to know someone and they said, oh, are you free? Could you help us? They demolished the old railway station. And when they took the front of the railway station down, 30 great crested newts fell out. They didn't even know they got great crested newts on site. 
So 600 metres of road going over a river, a canal and a railway line was due to cost £12 million. In the end, it cost £14 million because of the newts. Because they had to stop what they were doing, so there was a delay while they got a licence. We got a, I didn't do the licence bit, but they originally had a licence to move 100 newts. We found 100 great crested newts, then they upped the licence to 200. We found 200. Then they upped it to 500. We found over 500. Natural England said, just get the site cleared. <laughs> In the end, we found 700 great crested newts and 10,000 smooth newts on this site. They also had water vole, so there's a whole load of habitat being created that will obviously benefit dragonflies as well. So there's a good reason for recording the other bits and pieces, because they give you some clout. Those really have clout. We had a good range of butterflies as well. Uh, and in one year, we had about 15 clouded yellows on the site, including the really pale Halise race. So, time for questions.